Well, here we go. We are going to do the trading desk segment. We're going to do it uh, as a back and forth. Drew, are you there on the line? I am, Victor. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Excellent. You gave me a little scare there for a minute. Uh, folks, let me tell you, here's something that Drew and I do every day. I'm on Vancouver Island. He's in my office downtown. We probably spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes kind of reviewing what we're doing in the market, what we see happening, what we're preparing for, how we're trying to manage our risk, that sort of sort of thing. And to just get right to it, I'll tell you that basically our position is this. We're bullish of the U.S. dollar. We're bearish of commodities. So generally speaking, then, we are long of the U.S. dollar index. We are short of the Canadian dollar, short of the Australian dollar, short of gold, short of WTI, short of the U.S. stock market, and short of U.S. treasuries. It's, I guess, Drew, we've got a little bit of a bearish attitude on some things, but uh, really, let's go to the Canadian dollar to start with. What do you see there? What are the important things about the Canadian dollar? <laughs> It definitely does sound like we have a a bearish tilt across the board, but that's the environment that we're in right now. We've talked about the market fragility that we've seen over the over the summer. Uh, The Canadian dollar especially has been five months of going sideways in in what I would call a two to three cent range. We're now at the bottom of that range. We're at a six month weekly low close on the Canadian dollar. We've had the Bank of Canada come out with a very dovish stance. The lower for longer is here in Canada, even more so than in the U.S. And and I think that is the key right there, is that the U.S. dollar could be going the other way, and Canada will be staying uh, very dovish on their central bank policy. Yeah, as we often say on the show here, it's not just about the Canadian dollar. It's about the U.S. dollar, and Canada just kind of gets hit with the backwash in a way. Uh, here's something else on the currency side. This is, Folks, this is one of those things. Here's something you didn't know about. Drew, tell them about the Mexican peso. That's right. It's not just the, the northern border that our currency is going down on, but the southern border. The Mexican peso is now traded to its all-time low against the U.S. dollar. Back in uh, July of 2014, when oil was still at $100, you could get uh, a U.S. dollar for 13 pesos. It now takes over 19 and a half pesos to buy one U.S. dollar. Just to bring that back home for us, that would be under 67 cents Canadian if we had had that same sort of drop. Yeah, another thing, by the way, on the Canadian dollar uh, is that we we pay attention to market sentiment and one of the technical ways of looking at who's got what on in the market. And we see that this, the speculators in the market, this is a, call it a catchphrase for hedge funds and that sort of thing, still have a very substantial long position in the Canadian dollar. If we, if Drew was just pointing out, we've broken down to here to six-month lows in the Canadian dollar. If we start to go a little bit lower, we're suspecting that some of those speculators may have to throw in the towel, and that would add selling pressure to the downside. Drew, you probably heard what uh, Dennis Gartman had to say about the euro. He really doesn't like that. Let's move on to the oil market, where we've generally been bullish, uh, I should say bullish, bearish on oil. We heard Dennis Gartman's uh, view there on the supply demand. Uh, Anything to add to what uh, Dennis had to say about oil? I I think he had a great overview. The continued oversupply story just continues to find a new chapter. Every time that we're supposed to run out of supply, we find more. Every time we're going to lose production out of OPEC, they raise production out of one of their countries. So the fact that we are now at new five-week lows in the oil market under $43, the lows of August at 39 are, are definitely within a, a testing range. And we've also been adding uh, oil rigs in the U.S. for 12 straight weeks now. Uh, if we got, look at the gold market, I know folks have heard me talk about being on the short side of gold. Uh, the recent uh, positions established there in the when the gold market peaked just after the Brexit vote, that we had one huge move up. I think it was up $100 one day in gold. Um, but there's a backstory to gold, and that is that the thing that's probably the most important to the U.S. dollar price of gold, obviously the U.S. dollar, but it's what we call real interest rates. That is, when you take the yield on the bond and subtract out the inflation rate, you get the real rate. Interestingly enough, 
that when gold was making its highs in the middle of July, real interest rates were making a low. And we've seen recently here in the last couple of months, interest rates have been creeping higher in the United States and real interest rates have been creeping higher as well. And one more thing on gold, there is the physical market where people buy a bar of gold and take it home, buy gold coins, take it home, whatever. And then there's the paper market. And that's the markets that I trade in, the futures markets, the ETFs, and that sort of thing. And it's my perspective that people buy something in the paper market because they're looking for the price to go up. They don't have the same passion about owning a gold bar that the physical buyer does. So if the people who bought, and there was a ton of buying in the in the paper market here this earlier this year, if they see prices starting to go down, they may be a seller. I think the key level to watch on gold drew about thirteen hundred dollars or so. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, if it breaks that level, you see an uptrend that's been broken, a support level that's been broken, and and more importantly, I think uh, in the last few days we've had seven of the last uh, eight trading days in gold be down days. This has been days when the volatility in the S&P has really started to pick back up again. So when people build gold into their portfolio, they want something that's performing better when their stocks are going lower. And we're just not seeing that sort of bid come into gold. So to me, that means that we could see a a little more weakness to come. uh, And again, with all the other reasons that you had alluded to. Drew, thanks for taking the time. That's a wrap for the trading desk.